So, against my better judgment, I am making this video. I was planning on talking about the psychological aspects of No Nut November, the benefits of abstaining from masturbation and pornography, but I benefit greatly from doing these things. You know, I'm able to stay focused on my work, my day-to-day -day stuff, and not pursue women. Guys, if I don't jerk off in the morning, I will literally ask out like three girls when I go to the supermarket. And I mean, not to complain about my success with women, but out of the 50 or so girls I've asked out over the past two years, I got 30 to 40 numbers. The rest of them I gave them my business card. I didn't get one text back. So is this me complaining? I find that if I'm having such a difficult time even getting a date that I might as well stay focused on my business. But why is the media promoting no, not November, but censoring things like MGTOW, men going their own way. My only guess is they want us to pursue women, spend our resources on them, as opposed to focusing on myself, on my business. Unfortunately, both men and women are unhappy for fairly different reasons. As such, there are positives and negatives for being either gender. And it's pretty obvious in the way each sex treats their professional versus personal life. Most men pursue women in their spare time while focusing on their job. On the other hand, women treat their relationships like a job and tend to pursue a career on the side. And keep in mind, guys, I'm speculating on a lot of this stuff. The main point being that I think the majority of men are wasting their time pursuing women, at least in America. Now, I did want to start off with the right path because a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is negative and by no means do I think that fits everyone, although most people have some of those characteristics. So in my personal, especially observing my family, you know, I see these girls were loyal to their partners from a young age, like the classic high school sweetheart relationship, getting married several years out of high school after college. A woman chooses to commit her prime years, her youth, to a man she desires to be with. In exchange for that, the man usually offers her security, income, and support for a family. The difference here is that a man is seen as more valuable in his late 20s, 30s, whereas the woman kind of peaks younger. And there is far more value in that female beauty and sex than a male. Yeah, it's why men go to strip clubs and spend hundreds to thousands of dollars just to talk to females. It's why a female escort is thousands of dollars per hour and male escorts aren't seen. I mean, that doesn't exist. It's not a viable business. The male is expected to provide more than just his physical beauty, although some females do certainly value that above all else. On the contrary to the high school sweetheart relationship, if people decide to be promiscuous throughout college and their 20s, sleeping with hundreds of people, things change and it can get kind of ugly. I mean, I guess I should have said that this video is mainly going to be me complaining about the current dating scene, but I guess you figured that out already. Uh, so promiscuity is shunned in society as a negative, but most men don't realize how promiscuous some females are. And it's not really fair for a few reasons. One, not every female is promiscuous. Two, males can be promiscuous themselves, but it's understandable as an even below average or ugly female can have sex with a male every night, whereas the male of equivalent attractiveness is going to be a 30-year-old version. Young male virginity on the rise, one-third of men over 18 have never done the deed in their lives. In fact, everyone's getting laid a lot less these days. Hookup culture? Total myth. Go home and tell your parents they were doing it a lot worse. Or better, I guess it depends on your point of view. This is the culprit right here. I wrote about it a year ago in my article, The Tinder Effect. 40% of couples are meeting online and this is pre-pandemic data. It's probably a lot higher now. Match Group, the owner of Tinder, Hinge, and a bunch of other dating sites is the most profitable app in the world. The owners of the company have gotten very rich. Video game companies have also done very well over the last decade. I wonder why that could be. That brings us to cell phones. In the past, if women wanted to sleep with hundreds of guys, I mean, it was basically impossible. She had to go out, meet them in clubs and bars, go on dates. Now a woman can have a roster of a thousand men just from getting messages on their social media. I need to do a whole video on this, but 
it's insane to think a female has access to hundreds of males that will basically do anything for her anytime if she asked. It's not just pretty girls, even average and ugly girls if they put themselves out there. I've seen people say that a lot of young women are being put on unattainable pedestals for many young men when celebrities and athletes are preying on those young girls. You know, imagine you're, you're a 16 or 17 year old kid in high school and the girl you're going to class with is talking to NBA players. I mean, that's an extreme example, but stuff like that, it's kind of the gist of it. One of the worst things to happen to gender dynamics is this. They put a smartphone with a camera into women's hands. That was disastrous for relationships and gender dynamics. From there, she can worship herself. She can broadcast other people to worship her. So much so that if she has a spouse, a boyfriend, or whoever people pursuing them, they cannot match the attention that she can get on her own. They cannot match the attention that she can get via Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all of these vehicles to broadcast herself for women's worship. And the beta males are eating it up. Is 80-20 the truth? And if you guys aren't familiar with that, you know, there's kind of a rumor going around that 20% of men get 80% of women. And women are far more selective in their partners than men are. Most men will have sex or a relationship with anyone they're attracted to. And I wanted to say that, yeah, yeah, most men are pigs that just want to have sex with you, but that doesn't matter when those men aren't actually having sex and the female still is. It's kind of hypocritical. Like, you can talk all the crap you want about how disgusting men are, but at the end of the day, they are not getting the sex. Again, physical beauty being the most important part to men. Now, it's important to understand that the availability of sex and relationships for a higher value man is more similar to what the average woman can get. But for the most part, women have far more options across the board. Uh, I would say height is the biggest bar for men. Probably deserves its own video, something titled Female Height Obsession, because I believe it's the main factor destroying the current power dynamic between male and female happiness. Wanna come over tonight? I got plans. You will come over. No, I won't. You will. I won't. You will. Wanna come over tonight? When he's not six feet tall. Stop flexing your muscles, Jordan. You look like a fucking imbecile. Less than 30%, probably less than 20% of men fit the height requirement that most females are seeking. And then once you factor in facial attractiveness, skin color, race, profession, females are truly only interested in a small percentage of men. And I, I've seen some crazy, like, hamstring. Hamstring is when females justifies their ridiculous behavior. Like, I've seen girls literally say, oh, I've dated all the good men in Chicago. Should I move to New York? Like, <laughs> It's it's crazy. It's crazy. How does it feel to live my dream? Ah! I'm just checking if I hit all of these points fairly well, and I think I did. Uh, so promiscuity is permanent damage means, you know, if I sleep with hundreds of women, yeah, there's going to be a few of them that I would rather have sex with above the rest of them, uh, which leads to, you know, access to hundreds of men inflates standards of a lot of women, and the majority of men end up lonely. Uh, which leads us to that toxic ex that girls seem to keep going back to, a.k.a. Chatter Tyrone. Her favorite out of the dozens to hundreds to thousands of men that she has spoken with or interacted with, and generally speaking, those physical attributes are 5'11", 6 feet tall, handsome, successful, dominant, and uh, most women, at least younger, to my understanding, do have a roster of these people, which means, you know, like a sports roster, they have 5, 10, 15 guys, they will always contact, and uh, I, I would love if some of these women actually told the truth about their behavior, because I think it would blow your mind, I'm sure there's some crazy examples out there of girls literally having hundreds of guys on speed dial because you know women have better memories than men i think they're they're made for this kind of stuff if women are unable to obtain a man that meets all of their requirements or they always want more you know people love excitement people love being happy uh, you know just like a drug addict wants more cocaine or heroin they can never be happy enough uh, some women treat men like that and some men treat women like that uh, so you know one guy they might like to fuck 
another they go on dates with that gives them money. It could be a sugar daddy. And then she gets to live her best life. Hot girl summer, whatever you call it. About four years ago, I asked five different guys to buy me the same exact Chanel bag. All of them bought the bag. I sold four of them and kept the fifth one. They never suspected a thing. I feel guilty about it now. But it was a huge come up. Yeah, yeah, so let me just reiterate those points. So many people, including men but more women, will fill the needs with multiple partners. So you have the physical needs, like a woman wants someone tall, handsome, rough, dominant sex. The emotional needs, dates, cuddling, simp sex, like uh, I guess instead of being like pounded into the ground like a cave woman, I guess she wants to cuddle with him and kind of make love to him. The financial needs, the sugar daddy, the car, the rent. But, you know, in that high school sweetheart relationship, you know, the woman accepts various degrees of these things. And most women will compromise on some categories for others. The best females, I think, will simply require less and go for the personality, someone they're truly in love with. However, something is always wanted. You will never find a female in a relationship that doesn't fit a couple of these things. And I guess the top females, when they're messing with the top guys, are factoring in some even more specific things. You know, is one guy taller than another? Is he more handsome? Does he have a schlong diddly dong? <laughs> Key thing to understand is that unless the man meets those initial requirements, particularly height, which vary from female to female, the other stuff doesn't matter, you know, and uh, skin color, facial attractiveness in, tied in with height, I think those are the main things. If a woman truly likes a man, she will make him know it. Any of you guys out there chasing girls, in my opinion, wasting your time. I mean, I kind of gave up myself, but one wake up call for me was seeing females spend their sugar daddy's money on other men they like. Not only that, I've seen women comfortable sharing a high value man instead of dating a single man. You know, we all see women bragging about being with husbands, aka a mistress, not caring if a guy has a girlfriend, uh, I mean even a wife. Now yes, men will do the same thing. Most men will have sex with an attractive female even if she has a boyfriend. Maybe not, but that man which does that did not turn down hundreds of girls. Many women will turn down hundreds of men and then go fuck someone's husband because he checks all of her boxes. So go figure. Is this dynamic reality? Is this all stuff made up for divide and conquer nonsense? I, I think there is an unfortunate amount of truth to this, uh, but cell phones and social media have definitely made it more difficult for men to be happy. You know. Was it more like 60, 40, or 70, 30 years ago? Has 80, 20 turned into 90, 10, or even 95, 5 because of social media? Are women being more and more selective? You know, have more men given up just to play video games all day? And, uh, you know, men do talk about women hitting the wall when they're 30 or, you know, whenever the woman is no longer highly desirable. And the wall isn't really true uh, because, as we mentioned, even ugly to average woman, regardless of age, can find sexual partners. Two things change for women though. They aren't able to get basically whoever they want and men no longer want to really pursue them past sex. In a way, the playing field becomes a little more even, still never in favor of men. There will always be thirsty beta simps that any woman can settle down with regardless of how many guys she slept with. I think the wall is something that is trying to comfort men into telling them it's not that bad, but it kind of is. And 
look, I'm not going to sit here and complain, guys. I, I, I'm like average height. Uh, I'm fortunate to be attractive. I can go out and get girls, although, you know, I haven't had as much luck. I don't go out much. I don't want this to be about me at all. I just figured that uh, this was relevant to a lot of people that were doing the No Nut November stuff. Like, how can you do, I don't know, why the fuck did I make this video? Did I just want to complain about women? I don't understand how you guys, uh, I'm assuming you guys are refraining from this to get with more females. But to me, I mean, I guess I'm a coomer. All right, you guys can go to frank-stefano.com to support me through all of my businesses. I definitely drop a like on the video. Leave me a comment down below. I'm sure we'll get plenty. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining me, guys. And I'll see you for tomorrow. If I don't get crucified. Thank you.